Truth Frequency Radio Network. KTFRN. Worldwide. Hola. This is Sienna Leia inviting you to join me tonight as we navigate through the seen and the unseen. Explore external and internal realities. Expose on-world and off-world agendas. Discover a path to joy and freedom. Now, join me as we illuminate the Shadowland and reclaim our birthright as free and sovereign beings. Hola, this is Sienna Lea. And I am here with uh, Matt Reed, Episode 3, The Beyond and the Universal Fractal. I think you are going to really be turned on and riveted by Matt, who is a very awake and aware young man with a, a very old soul, in my opinion, who decided to see if there was any validity to spiritual concepts. He embarked on a path which led through Christianity, Buddhism, conspiracy theories, Gnosticism, European occultism, leading up to breakthrough experiences with shamanistic plant tools. Matt discovered powerful spiritual truths, as well as cunning spiritual deceptions inherent to all modes of spirituality. Matt's journey has inspired and also strip down the view of basic spiritual truths of the universe and rules of engagement in otherworldly realities beyond the physical domain. We are going to jump into other realities, uh, what they look like, uh, what makes them up, how telepathy works, how various exchanges with non-human entities played out. Matt has had these experiences, and so I bring you on tonight, Matt Reed. Welcome to Illuminating the Shadowland. Hey, Sienna and everybody. Thank you so much for having me. I know how crazy all of that sounds, but um, basically I was just motivated. You know, I, I've had these experiences and, uh, you know, I talk, talk with my friends about them all the time and it's like, you know what, let's just go for it. You know, why not? So um, I'd, I'd heard you guys interviewing before, or Sienna heard you before, and it's just so, just so appreciated the kind of care you took in the interview and the quality of the questions and everything. And I felt, like, comfortable enough to, you know, approach you and just go for it. So I'm just, you know, feeling so just, you know, honored and privileged to, to speak with you tonight. This is just too great. Well, I am uh, honoring and appreciating you. This is very brave because in the world uh, that we live in, we, you know, we have our day jobs and we have those realities. And then some of us are going very, very deep down the rabbit hole. And uh, I, you know, we've heard, I know we have our dear friend George Kavasilis is taking this journey up through the dimensions and there are people that maybe none of us know like Matt Reed and we're going to know him tonight who has absolutely profound experiences and I hope we can all just relax into this together here Matt and dive into your truth and your reality because every human being has the ability to dance with the gods to recognize his own divinity to have his own uh, spiritual challenges with dark entities, with the archons, with, I mean, you've been, you've been through all of it. So, uh, like I say, I, I know this can be intimidating to come on. Maybe this is one of the first things like this you've done. I just want you to feel comfortable with all of us because it, there is just a family of listeners who are, uh, the people who generally too into illuminating the Shadowland are deep on their own journeys. They're really, uh, facing themselves, they're looking at what is the nature of reality and willing to take the risk to journey into places that are uncomfortable, that are challenging, that are, th this is our birthright. To me, the, uh, particularly the uh, shamanistic plant medicine journeys, I live in Ecuador, this is inherent in indigenous cultures, this is one of the great gifts 
that the mother, uh, Pachamama, Sophia Gaia, have given us to restore us to our true nature. So I have great respect for people who have the courage to do this and uh, can articulate it to others. I really uh, think that it's horrific that these things have been uh, made illegal uh, in uh, the country that most of you are in, in the United States, uh, and uh, because it is our birthright to uh, to use what nature has given us to uh, remove the veil and really um, illuminate ourselves and become what we're truly here to do. So. I uh, have great, great respect for uh, the plant tools. Um, so now, can you talk to us uh, about what led you up to using shamanic plant tools um, in the first place? Oh, ab- absolutely. Uh, you know, I um, wanted to revisit the spirituality as I got a little bit older in life. I felt like, you know, I never gave... Christianity a real chance. I always, you know, kind of complained about going to church, and it was just boring, and, you know, I felt like, you know, this is important stuff, you know, where we're it's supposedly there's an eternal place you go to when you die, and this is kind of a big deal, and, you know, everything in life is, like, you know, kind of a little bit over our heads, and it's like, who am I to, to sort of sit there and say, no, nah, you know, spirituality, whatever. So, You know, we went into Christianity so wholeheartedly that I was bringing up different translations to my pastor and our our church meetings. And, you know, I'm asking questions like, wait, why is God jealous? You know, that's such a a human trait. You know, it seems like jealousy is going to lead to revenge, is going to lead to, like, hatred and, like, you know, and, and wondering about that Isaiah passage of like, well, God is saying he's a God of light and a God of darkness. So wouldn't that mean that he's like both like God and like the devil? So, you know, I'm, I'm sort of trying to figure this out. And then, you know, meanwhile, I'm, I'm also getting into Buddhism and seeing the sort of like twofold nature of consciousness. You know, these wrathful deities that, you know, they have a spear so that they can see up ahead of you something that's going to get in your way. And with that foresight, they're going to use that aggression to take out an element or an obstacle that was in your path. So I started to sort of recognize, like, okay, these these are these different, for, you know, forms of consciousness or these different approaches towards life. And there are there's a light side. And there's a dark side to things. And sometimes this dark side, it's actually for your benefit of growth. It's showing, it's revealing these things that you know, you know, isn't benefiting you. And it's bringing it up to the surface. And it's like, what are you going to do about this? This reoccurs in your life over and over and over again. So just sort of, you know, just taking this like very traditional spiritual approach at first and just looking at the world. And there was that sort of scientific skeptic in me that also wanted to take things a step further and said, you know what, you know, what about seeing, seeing the, these divine worlds, seeing these, you know, different realities that we hear about in the different holy scriptures. So, you know, it, it had happened sort of, you know, by chance that through a friend, uh, that we met that I, you know, had the offer to, uh, you know, basically eat of the forbidden fruit on my, uh, 21st birthday. And I had a, an immediate, um, just breakthrough experience. Okay. And Why don't we just dive right into it? What was that experience, uh, Matt, yeah. for you? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, suddenly I could see through my friend's skin. And see his whole um, skeletal structure and all of the muscles inside of his body, and I could see a uh, elaborate um, lattice of basically rainbow-colored, uh, you know, energy waves. It looked like vapor, just rapidly shooting through his body up along the his muscles 
uh, in his thighs, uh, breathing in and out of his chest. I could see the eyeballs in his head and brain inside and all of the different shapes of this uh, rainbow light uh, shooting okay. around mm-hmm. in his body. And, you know, I was overcome with this feeling of um, so much is hidden from us in our own reality that surrounds us. And it was a kind of like shock to my system at first. Like, I literally can't believe what I'm looking at. I, I'm i actually witnessing this and astonishment sent a, a direct shock through my heart. of just feeling like, oh, so much is just kept from us, just, just right next to us, but just inescapable from our grasp, just remaining intangible, yet is also ever present. And it just, it just was such an incredible uh, uh, experience. And at, at that moment, I actually, I looked up uh, to the ceiling and I could see um, there were two women's faces, actually, that were looking down at me um, as though they were sitting on the top of the ceiling and sort of just tenderly uh, smiling at me, and um, at, at which point I then um, just sort of was in shock. Like, you know, now I'm actually seeing these two beautiful women's faces that were just so calm and so relaxed. And and what I picked up on is my other friends in the room were meditating. They were helping me decide to kind of set this, this tone of the space of calmness. And I could feel from these two faces I was seeing in the ceiling, they were the representation of this kind of tender calmness that my friends uh, were bringing into the room. Um, so there was so that, kind of a, a field, a love field, or the, the, the divine feminine field um, that, that was supporting and sustaining the experience. And uh, plant medicine is a gift from the divine feminine uh, that supports a loving embrace of all that we are and then takes us into these realms. Now, uh, you have mentioned to me that uh, you went into a telepathic realms and realms where you started to experience beings once the stage was uh, set. Uh, you talked about, uh, well, we, yeah, maybe we just want to start moving into the realms of the uh, human-like and the non-human beings that inhabited that, that dimensionality and uh, what they were doing and what your encounter w- was and what uh, your uh, journey was in the process of realizing um, what all that was for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. This, um, yes, this, this was actually just the tip of the iceberg. It was such an emotional, uh, life-changing experience for me that I had actually made quite a, a regiment of um, what was told to me at one point. Uh, this is communion with the spirits. This is what a weekly communion with the spirits uh, used to be like way back long ago uh, when humans were uh, consciously engaging the spirits on a regular basis. That's what actually an entity was, was telling me at one point, which oddly enough was actually what's described as a reptilian uh, entity. Um, so I'm, I'm going to get in, I'm going to kind of just put one foot in front of the other and just sort of start at the beginning, and uh, we'll, we'll just lead up into the, the different experiences that I had. Um, first, the first experience I ever had with, a, with a, a being was the one I just told you there with the two women that I had seen up in the ceiling. Um, the next experience I had is I learned that when I close my eyes, that's how I actually can go into these other worlds. When I leave my eyes open, I'm very much here, and I'm seeing the other dimensions through the perspective of this reality, of this interface, if you will. Mm-hmm. When I close my eyes... I actually can feel physical sensations of going inside of my body. And I felt at times, sometimes I go into my head. Sometimes I'm going into my chest. Sometimes I'm actually popping straight up out of the top of my head and going who knows where. So the first time I uh, 
actually, you know, or following seeing the two women, the next time I had actually closed my eyes and I'm suddenly, I've had this reoccurring uh, vision of being inside of a sphere. And the sphere, it, I can somehow tell when I'm looking at it that I'm projecting my consciousness onto the wall of the sphere. I don't, I can't explain to you exactly how I know that, but it's when I'm in the space, I, there's somehow an inherent knowledge of, oh, you're projecting your thoughts onto the wall right now and hearing uh, both like a language and also like these expressions or faces of, of different characters. I'd be thinking something happy and there'd be these uh, glyphs on the wall of my sphere, um, which would have a variety of different colors depending on my mood and the expression that would come through the in the characters uh, I could tell was actually this direct connection with my consciousness and what would happen is on the other side of the sphere I could actually see different uh, embodiments humanoid shaped beings come up to my sphere and actually interact with my my wall, if you will. Yeah, that's okay. We don't need to go into the exact details of how it all played out, but I would be uh, interested in, in who showed up, what that interaction was, what you got from that, and, and uh, if you could dive into that a bit for us right now, that would be great. Absolutely. The, uh, you know, the first few experiences actually uh, were pretty much we just crossed paths. Um, the this one I'm speaking of right now, I saw it looked like a, a 300 foot uh, humanoid who was just floating on the outside of, of the sphere I was inside. And, um, and the colors, I just have to say, are just so rich. I'd never seen purples that purple before, or I'd never seen turquoise that rich. And uh, so everything is sort of made out of this, this flat matte glowing light as though everything's molded out of smooth clay yet it yet it glows so I, I look up and I see what appears to be this 300 foot uh, humanoid made out of a dark purple clay and he's just slowly scrolling by through space through it looks like an empty darkness and um, he just slowly turns to me and I just look at his face which is these two glowing yellow almond-shaped eyes, uh, a black forehead, and instead of a face, he actually has a silver shield of just a flat silver shield. And I look up at him in shock, and I say, who are you? And he immediately just responds to me, who are you? And the way that it worked is I suddenly heard a voice in my head in my own language, yet it was not my voice. It was as though my consciousness itself had intercepted whatever, whatever he was projecting at me and then converted it into a language that it knew I could understand. And that's how it's always happened when I've gone on to, into these other realities is I don't have to do anything. It just works. All of a sudden I'm hearing in English exactly what this being over here is saying to me. Um, so that, that was actually that first experience and I couldn't tell him who I was. I didn't know who I was. I really thought about it. It's like, well, I can tell you my name's Matt and I was born on planet earth, but really, do I really know who I am, where I come from, what has been the lineage of all of my experiences, what, what am I really, you know, who am I? And as I was just sort of churning over these thoughts, he just turned away and just went back on his way wherever it was that he was going. So that was, uh, that was pretty fantastic. It was pretty cool. But um, also just very, it can be very overwhelming. Um, you know, honestly, I... I Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you had you had spoken to me about you, the darkest experience with a tall teal skinned gray that uh, had asked to speak. Uh, um, 
what, what was that exchange like? Certainly, yeah. This um, we're it's we'll go ahead and get this one out of the way because this one's kind of uh, it was not a good experience, but it definitely taught me so so much. Um, so this this experience had started out just really beautifully. Um, everybody, we were just all having such a great time. Um, I could, you know, I could see my aura, or I could see the aura around uh, the love of my life, and it was these dancing flames, uh, like the flame that you see over the top of the saint's heads in those paintings. Um, I could see that sort of flame flicker all around uh, her body, and I was just feeling in complete bliss. I, I even said to myself, like, you know, this is the fifth dimension. Like, we're in the fifth dimension. We're just sort of blind to it. Like, we we have access to fifth dimensional technology and fifth dimensional energies on a daily basis. We're just we're just not really. That doesn't make up the majority of our day. It's here, like right in front of us, at our faces. Like, well, yeah, because we are trapped in the labyrinth of the mind and all the mind control conditioning. But when everything gets stripped away. And you end up just floating in the sea of of your own uh, consciousness. You recognize that yes, you're right. It is an it, in sense an inside job, and there's this infinite. When we do have a sense, finally after we deprogram from the false self, and we go through that that dark that question of who am I? I don't know. But and then the, the contents of what we're capable of experience start to show up. Uh, there is uh, infinite amount of joy that is our authentic nature. It's incredible how far we've strayed from that. Oh, it's absolutely true. I've, I've felt my, you know, I've, I've called it the more potent aspect of myself has suddenly just dropped in and has this kind of attitude of like, yeah, what have you been doing? You know, what have you been worrying about? You've, you've had all, you have so much, so much is here for you. So much is at your disposal. You have love. Like you have love. You know, don't, don't forget that. Like, you are this amazing, like, spirit that has been living forever and has been doing everything. And it's, it's a surprise that, oh, now you're making a strong connection with yourself. Like, oh, what a surprise, you know, this, this attitude of uh, just where have you been, you know, it's been here the whole time. So, yes, uh, it is there the whole time when we are, we've been conditioned to completely block and disconnect. And then I'd uh, be interested, uh, we have uh, four minutes to the break for the uh, Matt. I'd be interested to hear in how these beings uh, were, uh, because uh, these uh, beings tend to vampirize um, our soul force when we are not uh, taking direct access of it. And uh, you met a number of them along the way that were uh, inhabiting your being and challenging you for this is uh, it's free reign. If we if uh, we don't claim it, uh, it's it's up for grabs in my experience. No, that's that's actually a good point. There's there's things in our life that try to block that flow from us. All of these distractions, all of these things that just want your attention, just want your focus to take that focus away from you just expressing your highest self, just being, you know, what you know you need to be. Um, you know, an excellent, actually, a lyric from the band uh, Radiohead is, uh, you know you should, but you don't. And yes, and that- you, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you were saying here, too, a little bit further down the line, that uh, a lot of the drama, a lot of the... the uh, whether we're looking at the light or the dark, I mean, that they love that we are engrossed in a story that they're playing out in the external world. And uh, as long as we invest our energy and focus on it, uh, bringing forth this new dimension of reality that we have access to is not going to happen. And they make the drama very compelling out there now. It's quite the drama, isn't it? And as long as we give our credence and belief to it... um, which is a very difficult thing because there's so many injustices and so much inhumanity. Uh, we, we need to make a stand at sometimes. We need to show our care and our love and compassion by reaching out and being of service and help. And I'm not saying to sit back and do nothing. But you would talk about the darkness wants us to hate them, wants us to see ourselves as separate and different from them. 
That is what affords them their position. This is what keeps them doing what they're doing. We prove them right. We perpetuate the fight. I would, uh, we have about a minute 48 seconds right now, but I would like to dive into that because I think that um, we have got such a compelling story of darkness and light playing out on the world stage and politics in so many things where uh, we've, we're w- seeing the incredible injustices and tortures and uh, cruelties and toxicities and poison and fraud and uh, enslavement, and we're waking up to all of this. And at the same time, how do we connect with this deep uh, joy and interconnectedness of claim our birthright, claim who we are in the midst of so much. And there is so much of the darkness wants us to hate them. And and how do we navigate through that one? Yeah, it, it wants us to give our power away because that's what gives it a support. That's what we're calling for now. We We are requesting that this is, I see this as this is bad and that this is horrible, and then here it is. This is bad and this is horrible. Um, and that's uh, that's what I'm going to get into here after the, the break when I, I met this Paul Gray. And, uh, yeah, this, just how I was able to see, see right through him and see through his character. Uh, okay, um, we'll be right back, everyone. This is Sienna Leah with Matt Reed. The beyond, the universal fractal, it's all happening right now inside each and every one of us. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. This is Sienna Leah. I'm here with Matt Reed. And I wanted to read something that, that you sent in one of our dialogues here. May I do that, Matt? Matt? Oh, there? yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about my darkest experience with the tall teal skin gray. I had asked to speak with an alien. I did not specifically uh, specify a nice alien. And I, was invi- I, I invited this entity into my field where he wreaked havoc on me, and I went through various tortures to drain my energy and produce low-quality energy. The first thing he said to me was, why do you want to be good? That's not what Earth is for. How he assessed my consciousness and made personal jabs at me and humanity as a whole made me relive moments of trauma from previous lifetimes was very irritated that I had no master. He did have a master. That infuriated him to no end. How I got to a point where I just did not care. I was just irritated. I found the whole process petty. I was over it. It was so dramatic and desperate. I just sort of waited there, annoyed, until he finished. And then that was when I was released. I was no longer delivering what he wanted. I thought that was very uh, cool. And you talk about this and about becoming a, a motive detector and uh, the, how that this is the way that you uh, uh, navigated through this fourth dimensional reality where all these various uh, alien entities and uh, creatures were coming uh, that, that you finally got your navigation tools by becoming what you say is a motive detection uh detector or whatever. I, I'd like to hear about that. Yeah, essentially just motive uh, discernment. Strictly the motive of the being. I could tell right away with that particular entity, you just uh, summed up the story great. Uh, he was coming from a very angry place. He didn't, you know, he made the joke uh, with me, actually. Um, you know, my job is hell. Because I asked him, I said, is Earth hell? And he said, no, no, Earth isn't hell. Earth is a, 
a ways from hell, um, or like hell like, um, just a hell like experience. Uh, he says, My job is hell. What I have to do to keep tabs on all of this and keep things like held back and held down, that, that is hell. And then, uh, but then he, he suddenly realized, like, oh, I can't, I can't get on the, on this kind of end. I'm like letting him sort of see through me in a way. And he says, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, you know what really hell is? And he shows me a vision. He shows me a vision of all of these thrones, uh, surrounding a star, a sun. And in these thrones are all these robed men. And each robed man in their, uh, throne surrounding the star, they're actually manipulating the surface of the star, uh, sort of like a canvas uh, with paint. And he tells me, this is what you're setting yourself up for. You're just going to sit around and admire beauty all day. That's hell, as far as he was concerned. So he, he decided his, you know, his way of expression, his mode of expression was far superior than the, you know, the petty humans who can't even run a planet properly. That was sort of his whole attitude. And, uh, yeah, I just got sick of him, and I just could tell exactly where he was coming from. And I could tell this just until I got irritated, and he, he suddenly uh, recognized, you know, oh, you're not playing along anymore. I'm going to go try and find an easier fish to fry. I'm going to try and find something that's a little not so uh, bothersome. And that, that actually reoccurred in a few experiences. I suddenly appeared in a, uh, a murky cavern type space. There's a, what appears like a reptilian being, um, scaly, uh, with like a mouth like a reptile. And there's a, there's a snake, a guy with a cobra head standing there next to him. They turn and they look at me. And right away, uh, they scan, scan my life, scan my consciousness. And the first thing they said is, um, oh, we don't want to bother. You're too much of a bother. Like, you're thinking about this stuff more than we would care to even consider about it. You're not, you don't have these fear triggers that make you an easy target. Um, cause I'll, after I started doing this for a while, I learned, uh, I'll just kind of do snapshots of these different experiences and these different lessons. I, uh, I met a, uh, a skeleton being. And he looks like this, like, heavy metal style, like, skeleton wearing a suit of armor. And he charges me with a huge sword and uh, says, you trespassing, trespasser. Um, and I'm like, you know, like, hey, man, I'm just trying to have a good time. I'm just kind of looking around. I've never seen this kind of thing before. You're looking very cool with your jagged edges and your really cool armor. I'm really impressed. Um, like, where is this? What is this place? And he just starts laughing. He just starts cracking up. The skeleton being, suddenly his armor disappears and he transforms into a multicolored uh, neon uh, skeleton. His, uh, his appearance turned from this, these jagged, sharp edges into this very soft, kind of comical, bubbly um, character. Um, and this, is, this has happened to, you know, to my, my partner as well. She had an experience where suddenly there was a Medusa in her face, a, a female with scales, with hair that are snakes, um, sticking her tongue out in her face, hissing at her. And uh, immediately she responded to the Medusa being, why do you feel you need to be so desperate? Why do you need to approach me with desperation like that to try to get me to be afraid, to try to get me to so that you can use me? Why are you approaching uh, entities like that? And she appears shocked, and she suddenly, Medusa suddenly, like, steps back, and she doesn't know what to do with herself, and she replies, no one's ever asked me that before. And then suddenly... So, yeah, so you're actually saying that you're interfacing with these these uh, fourth-dimensional uh, uh demons and and entities and aliens and you're just communicating in a very uh laid back human way with discernment and awareness and, and love really and uh so so how do they respond to this i mean these are the the beings that are having their way with us unconsciously right in, in uh, triggering by our fear and living off of our trauma and holding the energy down and the forces behind 
many of these kind of uh, you know forces are the forces that behind the world controllers. They're doing massive amounts of uh, rituals, satanic rituals, and manipulations, magical and alchemical manipulations and maneuvers. And here you are, this twenty-something-year-old guy. You, you know, you've you've tripped into this reality, and you're just chatting with these guys. And so, what happens? They they loosen up. They they laugh. Um, they suddenly, I pick up from the strong feeling that they need it. They need humanity. That that kind of archetypal uh, myth that uh, the devil is supposed to learn from humanity. These sort of base level spirits that have just sort of built a nest for themselves with a bad gig. They're just sort of like addicted and stuck and they're stagnant and they don't have anything to really utilize. They're sort of, that's just what they do. So suddenly when I'm in this place and I kind of, my discernment's on, I'm, um, you know, I'm getting a feel for the whole, the whole thing. I just interject what I feel like is necessary, which is sometimes a joke, sometimes just uh, sort of like, once I appeared into like another cat, they feel like caves, but they're all made out of light and they're usually like checkerboard black in a color like purple or brown. Um, and you can tell a lot from the aesthetic of these places, the sort of vibe of the place. Um, and there's these little gremlin creatures made out of like neon light. And as soon as I show up, they're dancing, they're cheering and jumping around. And they're all saying, they're all like saying in their thoughts, um, he doesn't hate us. He doesn't hate us. He's considering where we're coming from. He's being considerate about us. And they were just so grateful that I wasn't, like, showing up immediately in a space of fear, like, ready to duke it out with them. They were just appreciative that I was being down to earth and I was being uh, respectful towards them. And uh, essentially, I set the tone. And that's just how it is. Like, I've had beings, they'll come up to me all angry and aggressive, and I'll just project exactly, like, uh, you know, I... I respect my space just as I respect your space, so you need to back off. Like, you don't have the right. You all, you almost put out, like, a contract in your consciousness. You just lay, you lay the ground rules. This is how it is in my space, and you're not going to mess with me. You're not going to have anything to do with me. And these sort of, like, shadow entities, sometimes they look like outlines of human uh, bodies without any really distinguishable distinguishable features, uh, they'll just push away. They'll just get out of there. They're like, this is not worth it. This isn't like an easy meal. This isn't an easy, uh, you know, This I can't really use this. This is not the kind of uh, interface and engagement which is useful to me because I'm joking around or I'm just sort of yeah, like... Yeah, yeah. And so, now, so what we're saying here is, is that uh, th- there are a lot of dark forces that uh, with uh, human consciousness, compassion, empathy, and discernment, we, uh, being the uh, fractals of the creator, of the universal creator, we have the power to s- send them in where they need to go with love, with compassion. Now, that doesn't mean they're all going to go peacefully, right? I mean, I'm not trying to say that some of these really hardcore ones are anyway going to give up. They're going to fight till the end. Uh, but But there is a whole level of getting a lot of this darkness off of our backs that may be like so much easier because you were, you know, you saw the, the, the love feel, the feminine energy, the support, the connection, the care, and you're just casting out demons. You know, you're just this regular guy. And I believe this is very real. I believe that humanity can do this in a, rather than think, oh, they're so hard. Here they are. They're coming to get us again. Oh, we got to stand up and fight against. And then we're giving all the negativity energy. And that's why I wanted to bring you on the show because uh, this is incredible. But it, to me, it's very real. And um, I would like to hear uh, any other beings that you had like that, that you had those kind of confrontations. Um, you, okay. mm-hmm. There's a uh, actually a giant snake, a uh, huge, huge snake, just in a in like its den, uh, made out of light. And I'll, I'm gonna switch gears here in a minute and talk about some of the nice experiences for the last part of the show here. But um, this cool, big, yeah, this big snake here, 
he's up and the first thing he says he's ready to strike at me and take me down and the thing he says is um my only desire is to destroy and consume you that's what i am that is what i represent like here i am you're in my territory what you know what's the next move so right away instinctually basically uh i just says i say right away i'm i'm just traveling i'm have no control over where i'm ending up right now i want to respect you i want to respect your space because this is your space and i want to have total respect for everything that you are and i ask in return that you there then respect my space and that we can have this co respect for each other and then all of a sudden the snake just chills he just calms down he gets back into uh, his coil and he just goes back to sleep like um you know like no problem like okay you we've established co respect uh, like i said setting these ground rules if you're acknowledging co respect then that you know it gets tricky though because with that being when i was being tortured i had to defend myself at times and try to push him away to keep him from you know continuing to mess with me well yeah uh, that's why you we can't have any rules every time we create a rule and a law then uh, the universe will come and tell show you well that was that worked for that guy that's not working now because we need to get present and in our knowing moment by moment we know how to address each situation. We have that instinctive uh huh or uh uh-uh. uh. And we need to use that, get out of our heads, get in our hearts, get in our bodies, get in our authentic energy, and develop this, uh, I suppose we could call it spiritual warriorship. But war- sometimes war is a very loving embrace, isn't it? Sometimes it's fighting. Sometimes it's, it's different for all of them, right? Didn't you have a whole variety of experiences with? With different right. ones, right. so it's always a case by case experience. Sometimes it's good to just not get involved at all. Actually, just to not sort of like that myth of when you go into the the cave of wonders, don't touch anything because it will consume you. You will, you know, you will enter its game, so to speak. And I found that to be exactly true. If if you're there and you're observing and you're really, you know, not participating energetically it just sort of you know goes by like on a train and it just goes to the next place whatever is a a match to your consciousness um actually a really powerful experience i had is um i i went i went into the experience in a very anxious place um as soon as it started it hit me like you know what am i doing with my life going into these other dimensions you know, this is sort of a weird thing, and I just was not feeling good. And the anxiety, that tension that you get, uh, the chills in your body that just shake uncontrollably, actually manifested into my vision. And that anxiety shaking in my gut matched the walls of this place, which were also shaking. And because they were shaking, the walls were causing friction with each other, which was creating shades of yellow and red. And it appears as though I'm surrounded by flames from this anxiety that was a match to the anxiety I entered the vision with. And I immediately thought, if someone died in this headspace or in this emotional space, they would think, I just went to hell. I'm just surrounded by flames right now of anxiety. And this was what I matched when I died. Here I am. So I freaked out for a little bit. I was able to navigate um, into just a sort of like lower, uh, like a pit. Of, the flames weren't as intense there. And the, the way you move around is essentially whatever you're paying attention to, whatever your focus okay. is. Yeah. But- M- Matt, we have uh, nine minutes left, so I'm just sorry. I'm sorry. I just want to, uh, don't, don't want to necessarily go into how you navigate while you're on the plant medicine more into the content and also I want to get everybody to your YouTube channel because it's so full of content and experience and uh, you have so much wisdom we could go on for hours and hours there's so much we haven't even scratched the surface of all the kinds of experience which is fine Um, uh, but yeah maybe right now you could just tell them how they can get to your YouTube channel and then also I want to talk about the cyber salon how they can cont- uh, have an actual intimate interaction. People who've had certain experiences want more clarification 
on the Sunday Shadowland Cyber Salon, or they can go to uh, Shadowland Forum and get all that information or Santa Lee, the Facebook page. But how do they get to your YouTube channel? Sure. Um, let me just very quickly wrap up that last story. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah, sorry. But what I, what I was able to do actually is um, calm myself down and in just the enacting of my consciousness, telling myself to calm down, the flames around me settled to a cool blue wave and I suddenly felt completely at ease and completely just peaceful. So it was, it was literally just me changing my mentality and changing my emotional space had a direct real time effect on the surroundings, um, which, which I was inside of. But yeah, yeah, it always does. It just, that when on plant medicine, you are completely getting an immediate feedback in a very graphic way. But we're doing this all day long. Absolutely. We're creating these realities. But then we think that they're coming in at us and impacting us from the outside. This is uh, Kelly Lachey talks about the, the liquid mirror, this is projection, what Carl Jung talked about. We're projecting the contents of our unknown lessons uh, it, all the time in this way. No, that's, a, that's exactly true. And it's, it was just occurring around me in real time. And I now recognize, you know, when I wander into an emotional hell in regular everyday life, how to get, you know, I need to get myself out of this headspace, you know. Um, but yeah, people can find my YouTube. Uh, actually, if they search on Google Transcending Archons, uh, it's called Transcending Archons, the Divine Plan and God Jr. I also did the uh, old Archons video, uh, Archon Earth Controllers. Um, I was kind of more angsty uh, back when I did that original video. And, if, you know, you go through these really cool just stages of this stuff where you know, you, you finally are able to make peace with just all these representations. And uh, that's at the heart of what I, I'm calling the universal fractal, is that there's just this sort of story that tells itself to us in the universe around us. And it's like, oh, here are the bad guys, and here are the good guys, and here's how the good guys can be bad sometimes, and here's how the bad guys can be good sometimes. And it seems like the universe is trying to show us a very particular story uh just teaching very specific lessons about engaging with other individual consciousness and it will come in any of these shapes sizes forms qualities and you know here it is this is this is what we got um so you know you better start getting used to it uh here's the problems that can come up uh if uh you know if you don't take responsibility for your ecosystem or you let corporations take over, you know, uh, so these, these are the stories that sort of make up our whole heritage of, you know, what I also call the family of consciousness. Like these kinds of things have been happening again and again and again. So, you know, here, here it is. Uh, yeah. And you were talking, uh, I really love your YouTubes and the ones you posted on the Shadow Lamb Forum, the pictures, and you're, it, you're so clear and lucid and talking and showing from a very transcendent perspective the massive experiences on the dark side and the massive experiences on the light and how we are all of this, that, that really we're moving into this uh, 5D uh, incension reality where we're incorporating massive of experience and uh, we need to get our navigation tools to a whole other perspective and moving through it and I really feel that your YouTube channel uh, helps with this in a very very clear way plus I don't know how you did these graphics it's absolutely gorgeous Matt uh, the um, the YouTubes you have up thank you oh th thank you so much I'm really you know just very passionate about these concepts and I felt uh you know, maybe uh, another time we can talk about the, the really wonderful, loving experience. Well, we have but four minutes left. You have? Can you give us one of those? And we can go out on that note, which will be great as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the huge key to preface it was empathy. Not even compassion, but actually empathy. As though you have been there and you have done it yourself. 
you know what it's like for to express that low point. Why were you motivated to be so hateful? Because love wasn't being shared with you, because you weren't receiving this kind of like acknowledgement or a balance in the way that you're being received by others. So therefore, a being will then lash out and be hateful. So a big thing that was um, a beautiful experience, I, I met these two humanoid beings of light, uh, one made out of pink flower petal patterns, uh, and the other was a male that looked like the outline of a, of a male who was blue made out of seashell spiral patterns. Uh, they had no fe facial features. They were just made out of these patterns of light. Uh, they're the, the place that they were in was the same patterns on their body. Um, and they basically embraced each other just to the point where they were about to kiss. And they held that spot, this very tender, loving spot. And then they spoke to me. Um, you know, the first thing they said is like, thank you for being a good, genuine uh, spirit. Uh, if if you're a good, genuine spirit, you're essentially like on track and you're, you're achieving like, you know, spiritual evolution. Um, and, you know, the fact that you care, care is so important. Um, you know, you're, we can feel that you're hung up about evil and you have, you know, why do these evil things happen? And recognize that the evil you see outside of yourself is the same evils that are inside of everyone and everything. And exactly what do we do about it? That's what this universe is figuring out. That's We have so much love for everything. We're not going to deny anything expression. If, if it's possible to be, then it will be. And we're, we're developing how to cater to all of that, how to have every a place for everything and have it to where, you know, it is, there are difficult places you know, such as where you come from. And there are these difficult questions about, you know, how real are some realities compared to others? And just like how you question your dreams, you know, is that experience I had in my dream just as real as the experience I had in my waking state? And these are the questions of the universe. This is like, like we're a big family. And the family is like working out all of, these aspects, all of these possibilities on all of these different levels and, you know, don't worry about it because it's all being taken care of far beyond what you can imagine. And just the fact that you care and that you're being a good person, you're able to have one hand up in the highest consciousness available and you're able to then bring that to your feet and bring it to those low vibrations that they don't have access to that. That's what they need. And that's what a human is supposed to be for, to, to bring in that higher consciousness, let it all mingle in the human body, let it mingle with all these spirits of all these like low aspects, high aspects, and just work it just like one big happy family. So. Bless you. That's the show. Visit Shadowland Forum. We're going to meet on Sunday and go deeper into this. You're all welcome to come and join the conversation. Thank you, Matt. That was beautiful. Check out his YouTube channel. It is awesome. It's, it, it will really nurture you and take you into these realms with him. He's done a beautiful job. Bless you, Matt. Good night, everyone. Bless you all.